right, everybody. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to One Objective tonight. Guys, we have got a good show lined up for you. Um, unfortunately, though, I do not have my sidekick with me tonight. Chris uh, Chris has had a bad sinus infection. No, it's not COVID, I promise you. Uh, he had a bad sinus infection. He is just wanting to get over that before he came down. Um, so, Chris, I hope you hope you get well soon. going to need you next, uh, next weekend because I'm going to tell you what. You, sir, have a big job upon yourself when messing with this stuff. I have not done it in so long, and I was having to do a crash course for myself again. But we're up and running. Guys, uh, just let me know in the comments if you have any sound issues, if you can't hear anything. Um, just let me know. Um, so I see – I'm trying to pull up the comment stuff here. I think I got it all pulled up here. So if I don't get to your questions or you don't see me answering your questions, because I can't get it pulled up here right now. So – uh, I got to see Chris. He's chiming in now. So, all right, Chris, just let me know if you hear anything kind of funny or whatever. But um, first off, though, guys, I want to thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Like I said, we got a good show. We got Tyler Cole. He's going to be joining us here shortly. Uh, talk about his big win at the Bass Nation Kayak Series. Um, super, super stingy tournament, man. I'm, I'm going to tell you what. Those bass had nothing to do with pretty much anything I wanted to throw at them uh, on tournament day. I was able to find a little bit uh, on the practice, but couldn't just could not make it work into the following on, on the time that it, it needed to matter, you know? So anyways, I struggled tournament day. We'll kind of go into that a little bit here in a little while, but it, it, you know, I sucked it up so bad. It, it's really not important about how well, I, what I did or what didn't do or whatever. So, but we're going to let the guys that did do well, they're going to tell us their story and how they was able to make it. But also after uh, or during Tyler's conversation, I'm also going to bring Jason Hensley on. Uh, he ended up finishing fourth place. He is a uh, One Objective team member. He does a lot with One Objective. And to be down there and be a part of that and seeing him have such a great finish, uh, we're really proud of him for that as well. So, um, But first off, I want to thank all our sponsors. I want to thank Bonafide, Native, um, Baino Power, Power Pole, Falcon Rods, Missile Baits, uh, Yak Attack. Guys, we got a lot of great companies that back us, uh, that help support us. And, you know, we got a, we got a Christmas giveaway coming up here soon. So um, we're going to be trying to get some uh, some product from these guys and, and helping to be giving away, uh, uh, doing a, another great giveaway like we do on our Christmas giveaways. It's normally a, a big success, and uh, we're hoping to do an even bigger one this year, hopefully. Um, but... Guys, go check them out. Uh, you know, go help support them. They support us, and it really means a lot to us. So, um, also, um, we got a few videos that's going to be coming out here on our YouTube. I know a lot of people. We've had some people asking about, um, you know, doing some fishing videos. So we're going to be having some of that out um, from each day of practice between James and me. We're also going to be having, uh, you know, just stuff going on through our tournaments. Uh, we also got a few more installs coming out. But where we were at, guys, we had absolutely no service. We were fully off the grid at the cabin we're staying at. Now, once we got to town, we had service and could do everything and try to take care of some side business stuff. But most of the time, we was getting off at water late, getting back, rigging tackle, you know, making sure everything's all right with the boats before you go back out the next day, and then just getting to bed. Um so we didn't have a lot of service, couldn't take care of a lot of emails. It, it was a struggle, man. When I finally got to a point of service coming back from a tournament, it was crazy having emails I had come through and all that and questions. So um, I appreciate everybody kind of being patient with that. We'll be a little more prepared for that next time. Um, but anyways, um, guys, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get Tyler on. Let me make sure I hit the right one here. Yes. All right. We hit the right. We hit the right button. We're on a good path for a, a good show tonight. But Tyler, how are you doing tonight, man? I appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us. You just got home what an hour ago, maybe, if that. Uh, I pulled back into Iowa about six thirty, so <laughs> I left, left down there about six thirty this morning. So yeah, good twelve hour drive. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then plus your time. I mean, are you are you is are they still on central? Are they on central time, right? iOS. So, yeah, we're, so you or central. Time. Yeah. So you lost a little time there too, as well. Or I guess you should yeah. gained. You gained, I guess, a little time. Yeah, I keep an hour back. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I know you're tired. I know Jason's tired. I'm tired. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm flat, worn out, man. Uh, it's crazy how 
a tournament like that takes it out of you, you know? It, it's, you yeah. know, people think, oh, it's tournament fishing, you're bass fishing, you're sitting down or you're standing up, but, man, you are so, like, especially with after talking to you and your technique and what you were doing, you're so tuned in because you never know when it's going to happen. And you got to be yeah. ready for it. And, you know, you're talking, you, you were catching some of your fish off a of frog, so, and it you didn't get a lot of bites. So you had to be ready and focused at every moment. So you're mentally just drained when it's all yeah. said and done. But um, but before we get into that, let's kind of talk about your practice. Um, first off, too, congratulations on your win. It was amazing to watch it all go down uh, and, and, and see. You know, like I know it was really tight at the very end. Both of you guys yeah. submitted fish at the last minute. Um, it was it was really awesome just to see it all go down. I was glad to be a part of it and be there with you guys. Uh, but let's talk about your practice. What day did y'all get there? And then how much time how much time did you spend practicing? Um, we got in Wednesday. We left we left Wednesday morning. Uh, well, it was about midnight going into Wednesday. And I actually met another angler from here in Iowa, Tommy Thompson. We actually met in Peoria, Illinois, and then traveled down together. Uh, we got into town, oh, two thirty, three o'clock, and got everything set up. We got checked into the campground, got everything set up, and we went out for just a couple hours. We went to one of the went to Soddy Creek, and it was about dead in there. We didn't get any bites at all between the two of us. And so we just went back, regrouped, and we were going to hit a different area of Saudi the next day. So we headed out there on Thursday, and I'm not a crankbait guy. I I despise crankbaits, <laughs> and I hate I hate spoiling them. It cost me $3,000 in Texas this year. <laughs> and, and, I mean, it was... We literally went out and we found four fish. We didn't find any schoolers. You know, they were just resident fish. And I'm like, but Tommy, Tommy had his head up and he, that was, that was his plan. He was going to run spot to spot. And cause he caught, I think he caught six fish. I only caught four. And he asked me what I was going to do. And I said, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go find some different fish. And so Friday I ended up launching at, Chester Frost, where we camped, I'd been watching the seagulls all week out on these shad schools. So I turned on the side imaging on my Lorance and headed out and just scanning. And there's probably 3 million shad in that bay, but I didn't see any bass underneath them. <laughs> and so I'd, I'd been staring at that grass since I got there. I'm like, you know, Everybody that goes camping, you always hear that story of that five, six pounder that some guy caught on a bobber right yeah. out behind their camp, right out behind their <laughs> camper. I'm like, well, maybe this, maybe this would be that kind of area. <laughs> and just kind of putting it together and thinking about it. It's like, you know, all these fish are traveling right now and they're just, they're in such a funk with the way the water was. I figured I'd just shoot over there quick and check it out. So I ran down and I caught two on a chatterbait on Friday both about 15 15 and a half you know but then i went down and i scanned some more areas that had grass on it and turned around and i was coming back and i'm like you know i'm just gonna humor myself and i'm gonna throw a frog because that's all i heard was about this frog bite on chick i was this frog bites the way to go yeah and that's that's my game up here i love fishing a frog and about my third cast in, I had an 18 that just completely destroyed it. Like he'd never seen a frog before, but he was hungry. Yeah. And so I stuck that fish and then I moved ahead because I'm like, you know, one's luck, two's a pattern. I literally, I moved ahead probably 30 yards and I caught a 19 and a half. <sighs> so we just, we folded her up and we had it back and had some sandwiches. And so then... That night it was me and me and Tommy and another angler from Iowa, Matt Miller, and then Greg Greg Noser and Matt Lindsman stopped over for a while. And I told them all I said they were talking about what they were going to do and how things were going to work. And I turned and I looked at them and I'm like, "You guys may as well stay home. I'm going to win it on a frog." <laughs> that was their exact reaction. They laughed just like that. They're like, "No way." 
there's no frog bite on this lake. I'm like, there's going to be five. I, I guarantee I can get five. It might take me all day and I got to make it count, but I think I can pull five off that, that weed bed. Yeah. And that, I mean, that was pretty much my pre-fish and I didn't get a lot of time, but I mean, we made the best of what we had. Yeah. Now I, I remember running into you guys in Saudi, uh, the day that y'all were there, uh, when y'all got there, yeah. I guess, or whatever. And I found something really special in there, but I knew that it was going to be a risk of other people finding it. And then yeah. also the fish not being there because I, I run into school and fish. And okay. when you got a Saudi, you go through the bridge going towards the main channel on the left-hand side. It was all flat over there towards the main channel. Yep. Well, there was pockets of grass, but yep. I was actually talking to my wife during practice coming back and I wouldn't even cast. I was just kind of just fiddle farting around, looking around. And I see shad busting everywhere and I'm like, Oh man. So I go over to a yeah. little key tech and I catch one about 17 inches long and I see more in there and I'm like, huh? So I went down. There was another grass flat. Did the same thing. Caught another one. And I'm like, man, I have found a mother load of fish, you know. But yeah. we all know schooling fish, <laughs> dude, that is one minute there, the next minute they ain't kind of deal, you know. Yeah. Slot machine on tournament. Day. Yeah. And that's what happened. Now, I, mean, I was, they were there, but they wasn't feeding and they wasn't pushing shad. And I had two blow ups on a frog like you were talking about, but they just, it's like they hit it and knocked it out of the pads. You know what I mean? Like a, they they yeah. didn't get it good, but what do you think? Because that lake went through a change, and if you watch the the graph, it was dropping like steadily before we got there, steadily dropping, dropping, dropping. It was still dropping during practice until we got to about Friday, and yeah. then it looked like it was kind of barely coming back up again, like they wasn't pulling water. And do you think that's kind of what changed things up for a lot of people? A lot of people struggled tournament day. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they, the way it sounded, they dropped that water five feet this week. Yeah. You know, I mean, anytime you have that kind of drastic change on a southern strain bass, that's that's the end of them. You know, they'll lock up tight. Yeah. And it just puts them, it puts them in back into a, a transition. They don't know what to do. The, the temperatures are still reasonably warm, but the overnights are getting cold like it's time to go to winter. And then the, the water drops on them, and they just, I think they just scatter. Yeah. I mean, and they're just starting to, just starting to build their schools back up now. I mean, because I didn't, I was, I was assuming I was going to find bass under every shad ball, is the way it sound. You know, and I didn't find that in any of the places I went. It was just tons and tons and tons of shad. So, my thought with this, with this grass line off, off the river, I'm like, you know, if they're migrating, if they're moving, this is a great spot for them to stop, you know, pull in get something to eat, hang out for a bit. And that's, that's where I come in. But I mean, they were, they were there. They weren't there heavy. I mean, it was mm -hmm. a, it was a small day, but. Well, I, I think what the problem was we ran into, and, and we'll have Jason on because this was another spot when we was practicing. Jason was like, you know, we kind of – we found the stuff we were looking for. Jason was still struggling, and he kind of found a spot. And I was like, man, I was contemplating. I was like, man, I ought to come here and fish this with Jason, you know, like because we were we kind of – me, Jason, and James kind of all found this spot just kind of just fiddle-farting around, you know what I mean, and just happened to find it. And – um, but I was like, well, now James has got a spot. I got a spot. Jason's got a spot. You know what I mean? Like, and that's how we left it. And not saying that even if all three of us went in there, it might have hurt the outcome of it, to be quite honest with you, because I think it would have been too many boats. But the, yeah. what I'm getting at is key is, is they were all chasing Shad. And I think when yeah. they're so keyed in on Shad that it makes it a tough bite because now they have so much there to pick from that it's really hard to get them to hit that bait. And and we'll yeah. hear from Jason here in a little while because, like I said, you're on a different pattern. You're on that frog bite. They were up there waiting for something to crawl across that pad, no matter what, you know. Well, the shad, the shad do come into play in the end on that last fish. And really, it was it was kind of a crazy deal, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, um, 
But yeah, once we get Jason in, we'll talk. We'll talk a little bit more about the shad, the shad uh, going on. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, you found your fish. Now, I, those grass pockets you were finding, because this is something we kind of stumbled across, was we couldn't get nothing towards the backs of the creeks. Like I, I, we just couldn't get nothing working. It didn't matter if it was grass. It didn't matter. I just didn't see a lot of shad back there like we, you would normally see in the fall. A lot of it was at the mouth of the creek, or like the first point into the creek now was you kind of was yours just mainly pockets off the main channel or was there was it like creeks with little pockets um basically mine were just back cuts off the main river channel i mean the the actual channel was probably uh, 100 yards off the shore and it was just kind of a sloping flat up to the bank and the the grass that i fished was a foot and a half two feet deep and if I if I keep my kayak in that that four foot range, and then just angle cast at it, that's when I was getting most of my blow ups. Yeah, but it was just kind of a play. I think what they were doing is they're coming up off the hump to feed, and then diving back down in the channel to move where they want to go. Yeah, so you're just kind of getting them when when they're coming in to feed, and and see, I think that was some of the the issue too is like the fish I was on, if I would have wanted to pull out and went to the channel, I might've been able to find some more of those fish. You know what I mean? Cause it got really cool. We've had some very cool nights and then you had a couple warm days, you know what I mean? So, um, and then you had a massive cold front that did come through the day. It was windy as crap. I mean, each day was different during practice, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it's really tough it, to, to be able to, to stay with that every day. And I think yeah. you're, you're almost better just to practice Thursday, practice Thursday and Friday because the weather was so crap before that that everything changed by Thursday and Friday. Yeah, I mean, when when we got there Wednesday night, we had water temperatures up in Saudi at 52, 53. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these, these fish should be stacking up at that temperature. Yeah. And by Saturday, or, yeah, by Saturday morning, when I went out to the main channel, it was 58. Yeah. That was morning temp, and I. it was time to throw a frog. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, it seemed like just talking to people, if you did catch them off of a top water, like a buzzbait or a popper, they were really small fish, um, just for yeah. when I'm talking to people. But it seemed like that frog fish, the, the big ones were in that grass, or they were either out deep somewhere. You know, like it wasn't there was no kind of in between it, they were either in thick in the grass or down deep in the, you know like a creek channel or something like that but let's talk about your last fish because i mean let's talk how, how much time did you have before the tournament was over when you caught that fish i caught that one at exactly 20 minutes to three <laughs> but so at 215 i actually i had a good blow up i mean solid blow up aggressive I waited, I reeled down, felt it get heavy, and I, I stuck this fish. And I know at that point my adrenaline was running, and I literally, I reeled in the lips of this fish. I mean, that's that's how hard I I mean, literally, there, that was the lips. No, yeah. Not attached to the fish. <laughs> no, they were still on the hook. Oh, my gosh. And so that, that really got me. Like that, I'm like, there it was. Yeah. Now, if you rewind back, rewind back to March, this will explain the whole situation. So March, I'm sitting on like 68 and a half inches with four fish at the Bassett Fork. And I lose my fifth fish at the net on a crankbait. Oh, gosh. It was a long 14-hour ride home. Yeah. So now we're, now we fast forward to the last tournament of the year. And I was sitting on four fish was a solid 68 and something limit and i'm looking for my fifth one and i just ripped his lips off you know <laughs> yeah. so i i backed out of there at 215 it was just i mean it was literally just a little mud flat and it was starting to get muddy with all the boat traffic on the main channel so i backed back out and i went back to the north and just started working the edges and the bank fishermen were there you know what I mean? That's that's something we all run into when you run a spot like that. You know, and so I just I I worked in around them, and at like 
I literally did that for like 10 minutes and I'm like, I have to go back to this spot. It's where I caught my 16 and three quarter. I just ripped the lips off another one. That means there's fish there. There's got to be more than two in there. So I turned around and I come back down and I just, I shut my motor off and I just let myself blow in and I started casting. I had one come up and missed the frog completely. And I literally, I sat back and I'm like, is this really how this is going to (laughs) end? You know, and, but I just kept casting. I'm like, you know what? The tournament ends at three. A good friend of mine told me that when I first started that, he says, you know why the tournaments run to the end of start time? He says, or the end time. He says, so then you can catch fish all the way up till then. (laughs) And so I just, I kept firing. And there was one little spot that the 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 grass looked a little heavier, and it kind of come out to a little point. And I just I kept focusing on that spot, and I don't know I'm not sure why. It was just something to throw at in a big expanse of grass mat, and it was just all at once. This fish come up, hit it, reeled down, I set the hook, and this fish literally comes straight up out of the water and just flopped right on the top of the mat. So I'm cranking. I'm like, that's a keeper. That's my fifth fish, a keeper, you know. I get it down and I reach down to grab it and I literally stuck my whole hand in its mouth and I'm like, oh my. (laughs) It's a really good kicker. And I picked it up and I I did. I straight turned into Ike. (laughs) I mean, I was pumped. So I got everybody in the campground staring at me like must have drank too many beers or something, you know. And the one old boy has been sitting on the lawn chair all day watching me. He's like, hold it up. I want to see it. So <laughs> I held it up, ended up getting my pictures, and then I did a little live video on Facebook. And that's, I mean, that because the board was shut off at that point, so and everybody was following. And the messages were starting to come, you know, did you get that fifth one? Did you get that fifth one? And I knew with like 20 minutes left, there wasn't, there wasn't much time to grab another bite. Yeah. And it was, it was a pretty incredible feeling to grab that fifth fish. And I mean, like I told him when I come down, I'm like, all I want to do is catch a limit on chick, you know, and do just do good on one of the bigger reservoir lakes because Kentucky lakes kicked my butt a few times. Yeah. Yeah. That That's those big, big river system lakes can be tough too, you know, cause it's a lot of those systems feed off the, you know, feed off of, of power generation. Or shall I say water f- current is what I mean. Yeah. When they're, when they're generating power, you get the current and it was shut down there for a little while Saturday. You know what I mean? Like it, it was going yep. a little bit, uh, Saturday morning early, but then yeah. it was like shut down. Yeah. And, Cause I noticed my weeds really changed direction. Cause yeah. I had, they were all facing, I mean, they were all facing one way when I started in the morning and then by afternoon they were just in with the wind and I'm like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that was kind of something I was noticing too because I was like normally when I was sitting on the grass, it was like a slight pull pulling me out towards the main channel, and I was actually just kind of sitting there like not even I didn't have the power pole or nothing. I was like, man, this this is not good. There is no power generation going on at all, and that's what sucked because it was so beautiful outside the night before. People could yeah. easily sleep with the windows open. They didn't need to run power. They there was not a need for a lot of power, you know? So, um, but cause I know most of the week they were, like I say, they were pulling it pretty hard. Um, yeah. I know James went up the river during practice and he was like, man, the current is so strong up here right now. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, man, it, that's, it, it's phenomenal. I, just to see you be able to do that. And like, say you never give up until right. you got just, a, I mean, there's one story of a guy qualifying to go down to Texas for the Bassmasters Classic with what a couple seconds left to submit that fish. 16 seconds. Yeah. You said. So, and I talked to him at the ramp when he came, he was like, dude, yep. I just submitted my fish at like, I, he said, I think I had like 15, 16 seconds left, something like that, you know? And I was like, he was even concerned it took, you know, like it's that close. Yeah. And yep. I'm just like, man, almighty. <laughs> because yeah. all that matters is as long as your timestamp is with that picture. So yep. 
and if you know you're trying to hurry up and get one on the board and you know as well as i do sometimes them fish do not cooperate whatsoever on the yeah. board yeah i mean they these were loving to hold their tails up yep they just i couldn't get them to lay down at all <laughs> You waste so much time with it too. That's a, that's the a thing too. If you yeah. think if you take the time out of how many fish, let's say five fish, that's all you caught. But you take the time of just trying to get them to lay right. I mean, you could have a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Oh uh, yeah, easy. Yeah, and and it's it, like it's like I tell the guys up here. I'm like anybody that's getting into it. Like the fishing's the easy part. Yeah, get getting that picture is the tough part. Yeah. And me, I'm always, like, trying to clean my boat up, you know? Like, you might have lures there you don't want nobody to see, you know what I mean? Like, in the picture. <laughs> so, you're, like, trying to clean everything up. and. <laughs> I, I throw my frog back overboard before I put the fish on the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know I know how it is, man. It's uh, I, I've done it before where I, I've submitted a picture, and then I'll see a bait in there, and I'm like, uh oh crap let me retake that picture so (laughs) i'll throw the bait out the way and do it again but um but yeah yeah, it's it's crazy man i mean it it can happen like the blink of an eye at the last minute where you can really turn it around and and win an event and i mean going into this event we kept talking me james and jason and, and other guys you know at uh at the registration stuff was like man you get a limit you might be sitting pretty good like not winning it but you can come out with a check and a qualification to texas yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was definitely, everybody was, everybody was really down about the bite. You know, there was no real good reports. I mean, I heard a few guys up North were catching a couple, you know, nothing, nothing to write home about though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jody queen, I think he called a twenty twenty three something during practice. Uh, big yeah. fish was a 23. Um, yeah. there was several 18s caught, but when you look at the bag, for total i mean you might have an 18 or a good kicker fish in there but a lot of them were yeah. 14 inch fish you know yeah yeah lots a lot of 12s of 12, <laughs> 12 to 15 i mean and i mean that's that's your that's just your run of the mill cookie cutters you know every lake's got a pile of them oh yeah yeah and it's that one's full of them really full of them but you know in a tournament like that it does feel good though when you go down there and you can probably which i i couldn't f- seem to even get 12 inches in on tournament day but it does make you feel good though like if you can pull a limit you know if you can catch a lot of fish quick you kind of can say okay i can rely on the 12 inches at least get my limit and then go for a couple kicker fish but when it was as tough as it was man some of the people were just happy i would have been just happy just getting a limit 12 inch fish so well, I'm, betting there's, I'm betting there's 30 40 guys would have been happy with a limit of 12 <laughs> yeah you know I yeah. mean, it's it was tough, and I mean anybody that anybody out down there that caught two, three, four fish, don't don't let it beat you up. Like I mean that that was some tough conditions, and I mean it was it was a grind to get five. I yeah, and that was probably the hardest day because, like you said, when you when you get into when you get into throwing a frog, you have to be focused at all at all times, or you're gonna miss it. Yep. And, you know, all of us, when we fish, we're looking for the next spot to cast. And I caught myself doing that all day. I was kept turning my head and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, pay attention. Exactly. I mean, it happens quick with the frog too, man. I mean, it's, I've seen it where they've sucked them under, you know, and, and sometimes it's just like a buzz bait sometimes too. They'll just come up, suck that dude under and don't, you don't even hear make a splash, you know? I mean, they're just, they're crazy creatures. Some minute they'll come flying out the water like a whale <laughs> so minutes are like a sniper man they just come in and take it out <laughs> so yeah it was that first fish i caught at like 20 after seven was literally on the it was right on the corner of the grass mat and that thing hit it like a freight train yeah it's and uh I, oh sorry go ahead and i got got that fish to the boat and i mean i literally i looked at the belly and it was just chuck full and i'm like all right here we go we're gonna shoot for five yeah and i took all my rods like because i had a chatterbait laid out and a spinnerbait laid out and a, a waking crankbait over top the weed patches and i mean i had quite the selection off the front and i'm like you know i'm just gonna commit so i took all my rods and turned them around laid them down next to my seat and just went to work 
yeah, it's definitely um, that's a a frog frog fishing, and I'm not good at it by no means. But Jason, he's pretty good at it back at home too because it, it becomes a big deal um, on a lake that he likes fish. But frog fishing, from what I've learned, and me just messing with it, it's a it's like a jig bite. It's a five fish a day kind of bite. Some yeah. days you can have a phenomenal day with it, you know. But yeah. sometimes it's only five fish, and it's it's. It'll either make you a hero or you'll zero, you know, kind of deal. So, uh, it, it can be, it can be tough. The big thing with the frog too is, I mean, that's, that's going to be your bigger bites is yeah. what I've, I've found over because I've thrown it pretty consistent in tournaments for four or five years now. And you do, you find your bigger bites on your frog, you know, you'll at least get, you'll at least get a kicker fish. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, um. Uh... I know I've been beat by Jason several times in that thing, and I, you know, got beat again in this tournament by a frog. <laughs> you know, I've I got to learn that. I got to learn that a little bit more uh, to be a little more consistent with that. But um, let's get Jason on. We're going to get Jason in here real quick, and we're going to talk a little bit about the shad bite, and you're going to talk about your last fish and how that kind of played in with with the shad uh, involvement. So um, let me get get Jason on here. Wrong button. There we go. It's working him in now. You got me, Jason? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Let me switch you over. All right, man. Hey, man. First off, congratulations on your fourth place finish. Uh, I know when yep. you come down Thank Wednesday, you. you got on the water. Well, what did you, what is it, Wednesday you came down? Yeah, Wednesday evening. Yeah, Wednesday. So you had practice on Thursday. So yep, you pretty much practiced Thursday and didn't do any practice on Friday. Yeah. We were kind of really packing and getting tackle ready Friday and uh, hitting tackle stores and blowing money and <laughs> just <laughs> not doing what we really should have done. But we kind of was we was kind of focused on the spots that we had and they were the key spots. And that's just what we were going to do. And um, but yours was primarily off the shad bite, which we, we found that um, Thursday afternoon. Um but it changed up for you as well, Jason. Let's talk about your day and what you what you were throwing to to catch those fish and and how many fish did you catch through the day doing it? Oh, uh, I ended up fishing out of the state park and within just a couple hundred yards of the ramp um, from the mouth. The first point in was my main spot and pretty much where I stayed all day long was on that spot. It was just a grass point and the bass were just schooling and they stayed there all day. They were there that Thursday, you know, that we were pre-fishing and they were steady coming up. And when we got back, we'll start off Saturday morning. It was extremely foggy. I don't know where it was, how it was where you were at Tyler, but, uh, it was yeah. extremely foggy and it didn't lift till later in the morning. Yeah. And the bite was tough. There was, there wasn't hardly any wind. It was slick. And there wasn't a whole lot going on. I did catch a couple small ones on a Rico, some spots that were 11 inches. So I thought maybe I had something going on. I was working it real slow, but I got them to hit it. And then after that, it just died. But after the fog lifted and the sun come out, those schooling fish started picking up. The bait was everywhere. I mean, you could walk across the bait. There was so much bait in that area, but it was all tiny. I mean, just little one inch to two inch bait and two inches is a exaggeration to, <laughs> compared yeah, to what it, it was, was small but it was small bait but now, like i said it was just so much of it and like i said and when the bass are focused in on on that much bait you're throwing lures through there and everything else it's you could throw it through 20 schools and you might get one fish and that's just how it was for me it was slow like every four or five times they would come up i would catch a fish and they happened to be, you know, decent keepers. My biggest was 18. My smallest was 15. And I caught a couple 15s. I caught an, another 11. And I lost one. Didn't know how big that was, but it was somewhere in between there. But that was my deal. I mean, a little bit of breeze picked up, too. Not a whole lot, but that kind of helped. I needed a little more wind, I think, to uh, help that out with that school, those schooling fish. Now, your main bait... But it was... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. No, go ahead. Your main bait then was just like a... you talking about a, a underspin. 
Um, right. Yeah, I ended up um, relying on the underspin, a little uh, three eight ounce underspin with a three point eight Kitek trailer. And every time they would come up, you know, I would cast that to them because it wouldn't get hung up in the grass as much as some of my other baits. And uh, you know, me at home on my home lake, when the bass are doing that, I'm have a uh, flick shake tied on with the Cinco. And most of the time, I just drop it down in there, and it's it's money almost every single time. You know, they'll hit it. And I, I know I threw that flick shake 500 times and never even got a hit off of it. Yeah. Which was just, it was just blowing my mind. So I just, it was like the only rod I had the rest of the day was that, that uh, underspin. I just kept on at it. And you sit on that one point pretty much. I sit, whole... on, I sit on that one point basically from, I don't know, 10 o'clock till 3 o'clock. Yeah. And that's tough, man. Fishing the same spot, making the same yeah. cast. But, I mean, it was, yeah, it was it was a long day, but it was steady. I mean, the action was steady. Yeah, the catching fish was every now and then, but the action was steady. I mean, it just it kept you incited, it kept you engaged because they were constantly coming up, blowing up. But it would only last a few seconds, and then they would disappear. Yeah. And so it, I mean, that just it it was a fun it was a fun day. It was stressful, and like I said at uh. When they took the leaderboard down, I only had three fish. So I knew where I was. I think I was in the mid-30s with the three fish. And I knew two more would go a long way. Two more fish. Any size keepers would go a long way. Yeah. Uh, and and then I ended up catching those uh, almost back-to-back. And it just it just happened, and like I said, I caught one or two after that that didn't you know didn't help, and I couldn't do anything with. Yeah, but I, I something was telling me as the evening went on, I had the feeling that you know the scoreboard is going to start lighting up and stuff like that. But you know, some people posted fish late, but it wasn't it wasn't like I would have thought it was going to be. It was it was tough. Now I was, we know we're sitting there at the uh, tackle store talking after the tournament. Um, and the scoreboard was taken down and I think it was like 79 inches it was leading at the time or 78 inches or something like that I can't remember what it was and Jason caught his fish and he's like man I got I got 80 and 3 quarters or, so, or 81 or something like that yeah. and I'm like dude you probably have a good shot at this you know And yeah. but in a way you don't want to get your hopes up too much you know Jason you were talking about he's like nah I don't, I don't I don't think I don't think I'll win it you know but but the way the day was going, I'm like, man, I don't know. You know, you, you might have a shot at this. So we didn't know. We're sitting there talking. And uh, you, uh, Tyler, you walked up to us, and you was talking to James, and, and you said you had 89. And Jason looked at me and said, well, I didn't win. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, poor Jason's nerves was yeah. tore up. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about it on the way there, and Tommy asked me, he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, 89 and a half isn't going to hold on chick. I said, it's not. I said, do I think I'm top three? Yeah, but I don't think there's somebody out there that smacked them. Yeah. Now, once you got to the to the, the weigh-in, or uh, I guess what we call it, you know, where they do the uh, ceremony and all that, talking to everybody, did you, did you start getting the feeling like, man, I might have won this? Or, I mean, did anybody say anything that was kind of like they thought they, you, they might have more than you? So let me tell you about my little buddy, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so I called Steve when I, cause I missed his call when I was loading my kayak to come to the awards. And so I called him back and I'm like, Hey, what'd you need? And he's like, are you on your way to the awards? I'm like, for what? I was just messing with him. He's <laughs> like, well, you never mind. I'm not even, I can't say nothing. <laughs> and, but, He's like, just get here. I'm like, all right. So I loaded my stuff up and I, we went back to the camp and dropped everything. And I jumped into Tommy. I no sooner I walk in the restaurant and I'm like, all right, I'm here. I said, how was it? And he's like, dude, he said, that was the best finish I've ever seen. He said, 221s come in back to back. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have this. <laughs> <laughs> So he literally talked me into it and then turned around and talked me right out of it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I I figured I'd be in the top three. I didn't know where, you know, and 
like I told Tommy, I said, whatever, whatever happens, happens, you know, I mean, this lake can kick out numbers quick. Yeah. And I mean, just being fortunate to be able to stand up there. I mean, with the group that was up there, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. All of them are good, good fishermen, good sticks in there. And you know, it was crazy to me too, as I was looking through and, and you, you talked earlier, Tyler, like, you know, don't be down on yourself if you only caught right. one or two, three fish or whatever, because there was people that was lower than me when I had 14 inches that were yeah. really good sticks. You know what I mean? I mean, there was, they didn't catch nothing. And I mean, that's, that's the thing with fishing, you know, when you get, when you get on these bigger lakes, they can shut off. I mean, they, you can take the best fishery in the world and it can humble the best in one day. Yeah. You know, so those guys getting in that made the trip down, don't, don't let it bother you. Literally. I mean, just take the lump and look towards the next one. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Um, guys, before we go any further yeah. with these guys, if you don't mind, please take your time, share this video. Uh, I want to give these guys as much attention as we can, um, especially Tyler. He had a phenomenal win on Lake Chickamauga. So if you don't mind, take your time. I love the fact that people are sh uh, liking and, and joining us. But like I say, if you don't mind, go ahead and share it on your page. Uh, start a watch group, however you want to do it. Um, but we just want to get these guys as much attention as we can. But also, this is Bass's first year of doing a kayak series. So we want to bring attention to what bass is doing and what this could potentially be in the next several years. You know, I mean, this is on a path to be something good, especially with the turnout here. A lot of their other turnouts, their first year, the amount of the big turnouts that they've had is phenomenal. Um, so, and it's a great, a bunch of great guys that have been running this thing. Um, everything's been smooth. I mean, you know, you might have a hiccup here and there, but I mean, I don't, I haven't heard anything bad about the whole bass, uh, bass, nation kayak series so um but guys just please hit the share button share this with your friends let's get some people have to ask some questions y'all got any questions for jason tyler please go ahead and start putting them in the box here and um and you know we can learn learn a little bit more learn a little more with it what, what they did and how they what their setups were and all that so but uh but you know something real quick with both of you guys and i don't know if it happened for y'all or what, but I know during practice, when we practiced, it always seemed like the bite was later in the day. You know, I, it was always like, right before we was going to pull off, you always found some fish. Um, yep. And then talking about the leaderboard, people were starting to catch fish at the last minute. Do you think that if this tournament went to four o'clock, you know, just hypothetically talking, you know, if it went to four o'clock, I wonder what the turnout would have been like with just big fish being caught, you know, like more big fish being caught because it seemed like, like I say during practice at the end of the day, and then it seemed like they were generating more power at the end of the day. I mean, what are y'all thoughts? Uh, Tyler first, what do you think? Do you think the weights would have been, you think it'd been a hundred and some inches? I, I think you'd have definitely seen some middle 90 limits. I mean, really, I think, cause like for me, I know my bite didn't really like a 10 o'clock. You know, the, the fog really shut them down in the morning, I think. And it just, it definitely, definitely changed the bite to where it was, it was going to be an afternoon bite. The last three hours were going to be crucial. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. Jason, how, for you, I mean, did it seem like your bite picked up any towards the afternoon? I know you saw out, it was a little slow until the fog lifted, but did, you, did it, it seem seemed, like it was getting better? They seem more willing to bite as the as the uh, tournament progresses. It got a little later in the day. Um, mm -hmm. I think if we would have went went that extra hour, yeah, we definitely would have probably seen a few ninety inch limits. I'm not gonna say a whole lot, but I definitely would have seen a few, especially those guys that were fishing that grass, um, you know, with the frogs and stuff like that. They would have they would have got those bites then. People like us, I mean, there were there were some big fish mixed in with those schoolers that I just couldn't get on the bite. I was seeing them. I was seeing the bowls, but I just couldn't get on the bite. But, uh, you know, the guys like us that were fishing those schooling fish, I think it would have been about the same. But the guys fishing that grass, um, I think they would have caught them. Yeah. And that's what I was kind of looking at. I know, uh, you know, I, I lost a couple through the day, but, like, 
And then I lost. It seemed like I was losing more as the afternoon went on. That's what I'm gonna say because I just could not seem to get nothing in the daggone boat. It was just one of them tournaments it wasn't meant to be. But it seemed like I was getting more bites. It seemed like just talking to people on the ramp that more they were getting more bites towards the afternoon, you know. And yeah. a lot of times in tournaments, except in the fall, that you know your bite's kind of off by then. You know what I mean? You got the early morning bite and all that. But the way these river system these river systems set up, it's so current driven you know and wind driven and you know it's so many other things that make it happen but it seems like you got to have current no matter what uh in that lake to make it happen it seemed like it was happening towards the end of the day um but it, you know it, it's just it's just kind of crazy how it all set up but tyler let's talk about your last fish you were talking earlier about how the shad and it was a little bit more shad involvement with your last bite tell us about that last one yeah, so I mean, when I when I blew into this back cut, I literally the water was starting to muddy up so bad. It's it's a place that if I wouldn't have had, if I wouldn't have had two or three blow ups in that area, or you know, had the had the incident with the first fish, and then had the other one miss the frog, and where I'd caught the one early in the day, I wouldn't have stayed. It was it was so muddy and stained from all the pleasure boats and stuff, and all the main or the main river traffic. But when I was floating in, I'd literally watch Shad come up through the mats like they're trying to get away. And they'd land on top of the mat, and then they'd wiggle their way back down through, and then here they'd come again. So I'm like, well, there has to be something under there that's moving those moving those Shad like that. And that that really keyed me and kept me in that spot to to stick to try to get that last fish right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's crazy when you see him pushing up through the grass like that and you're just kinda laying awesome. up there. Yeah. Now I've I've seen I mean, it on a on lake, you know, where they'll push them up against a bank. And especially yeah. stripers. Stripers will do that in a heartbeat, man. They'll push bait up on the bank and you'll see them flopping yeah. up and come back in. And um but to see him push them up on grass like that, man, that would be that'd be pretty cool to watch. No, Tyler, did you try punching at all? No, I didn't. So that's that's one technique that I'd I shy away from, I just, it, it makes me nervous. Cause I have such as such a ridiculous hook set. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, sunglasses are cool, but they won't stop a bullet. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I actually yeah. thought about power shotting it. Cause I do that quite a bit. I'll take a heavier weight and put it below a drop shot hook and punch it through there you know, real low profile, but then just drop it in. And that, that works really well for me, but putting the weight on top of it. No, I'm good. Yeah. yeah it is a missile, man. Yeah. It, it, is a it missile. crossed my mind and I just, I just couldn't bring myself to tie it on. And yeah, I mean, I, I think it would have been something. I mean, you could have really picked apart because I came around one Island. The water was just crystal clear around this Island. And it was kind of just a point flat that come out. That was just, like a sandy gravel and then there was just random clumps of weeds and those bigger gizzard shad them eight nine ten inch gizzard shad were sitting on the tops of these weeds mm. and so i was constantly watching when they when they'd split to go just see if anything was chasing them and i literally come up and this this fish had to be probably eight nine pounds was just sitting right on top of that grass mat just sunning herself and I couldn't get I couldn't get the woes put on enough. By the time I saw her, she'd spooked, and I'm like, "Well, that's at least I got to see one that big, you know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's one thing I didn't see a whole lot of. You know, is big bass up there swimming around. I didn't. Yeah. If you seen them, they were busting a shad real quick. You know what I mean? And, and you don't know then, like, well, man, was that a six seven pounder or was it a four? You know, like because it happened so fast. That, but I didn't see a lot of big ones swimming around. The only one that I seen that that were bigger it was bigger when i was pulling a spinnerbait through the grass like uh the sporadic grass out from the main mats and yep. i had one roll up but he never really hit it good he just kind of rolled she kind of rolled up and looked at it and went back in i threw a cinco and never got she just she just wasn't interested in nothing but that's the only yeah. big one i actually seen that was like holy crap that was that was a really good one but um but most time in the fall you'll see him up there kind of cruising the banks at least for where i'm yeah. at and I was just kind of, it was just kind of crazy not seeing that. Yeah. But, um, but Jason, tell us a little bit too, man. What, what, 
what we've seen at the boat ramp because the shad were small. But not only that, the little crawfish we found at the boat ramp, you found a couple of them there. Yeah, there were some, a few little uh, crawfish about the same size as the bait. I mean, no more than an inch, an inch and a half long. And they were around, you know, the rocks and, the, uh, and on the ramp themselves, you know, right on the edge of the water. And they were just plain green pumpkin, didn't have any other color to them at all. But it was just strange seeing the small crawfish and the small bait, yeah. you know, yeah. in the same areas. Yeah, you just don't, you don't normally see that many small little crawfish around, you know what I mean? Like, you don't really see them that much as it is. When I mean, you do see them, you know, they're fairly better size crawfish. And I, and I was like, man, I ought to get that missile baits. What's that little uh, finesse jig they I mean, got? They, yeah, it, they were about the size of a quarter. Yeah, teeny teeny little things, but yeah, it was it was definitely interesting. Um, but Tyler, before we let you go, man, I, I like people to kind of know who you are. And uh, oh, we got a question for you here. Sorry, uh, Lee Hypes wants to know what color frog was you throwing and what brand frog was you throwing? If you want to tell us uh, to catch those fish, I, the only one I'll ever recommend is a booyah pad crasher. Literally. <laughs> five dollars and 94 cents from walmart yeah um i throw it in, i throw it in two colors green with a yellow belly or green with a white belly yeah uh that's because something... I've, I've always had the theory in life that no matter what what color the water is what the sun's doing what the moon's doing it doesn't make a difference a frog doesn't change colors yeah you're right i don't i don't know if it's right or wrong but it's worked for me so yeah yeah, and that's the thing about this sport. You can't ever say where well, you're wrong because most of the time you tell somebody they're wrong, they're going to catch a fish off of it. I, I've done right. that before with a buddy in the back, but I'm like, why are you throwing it like that? That's, you know, it don't make no sense. And then they catch something. I'm like, well, I can't tell you it's wrong. <laughs> well, that's something I noticed from north to south, you know, up here. So I'm literally, I'm slow crawling this thing because, you know, 60 degrees down here is considered, you know, cool. Where 60 up home, I'm burning a frog, you know, cause those, and it's just two completely different fish. But, I mean, you see the guys down south just just raking that frog across the top, and we're real slow and meticulous up here. Yeah. You know, that get that side-to-side -side action and pauses, long pauses are what draw our fish. Yeah, and I, I think that could be an issue that I, I've learned, you know, need to learn with frog is, is I'm working it too fast. You know, you see guys like Dean Rojas and all that, where they're working around brush and they're kind of working it faster than there, but on grass, you got to give them the ability to find it and hit it, you know? And I think that's where I probably mess up. I'm hit, working it too fast and they're coming up missing it. Yeah. And the big thing I find is like after cold fronts and stuff like that, these bass, they don't want to move. You know, they want, if they're going to come up and they're going to stop water, they're literally they need they need a guaranteed meal. Yeah. You know, when they're gonna spend that kind of energy, the bigger fish anyway, you know, they need it right in their face and they need it to just soak there. And that that was a big key to this. I mean, I really I've never fished that that eight one to one so slow in my life. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, when it comes to, you know, naturally everybody uses braid with the frog, but when it comes to what, what braid and what rod setup are you using with that? I just use a, I use a suffix 832 and 65 pound because I like, I like to get down and dirty in the trees and I'll literally, I'll skip this frog as far up into trees, up and over branches, back and under. I mean, it doesn't matter where it ends up. It'll hit the water eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, and i mean some of my biggest fish have come out of those types of casts and i mean don't don't be scared to lose a six dollar frog yeah. you know and well, so and the biggest key like if we're if we're teaching fishing the biggest key is if you get hung up or it's 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 hung over a branch literally point your rod at it and pull straight back to you and yeah. that frog will jump it'll jump right over that that limb but i throw it i all my rods are built by hawkeye custom rods over in piasta iowa uh al engling builds them all for me on on rain shadow blanks and i throw it in a seven six heavy 
And then I have, I actually, has, it depends on like, if I'm in a heavy mat, I'll throw the seven, six heavy. If I'm in around structure dock, stuff like that, I'll actually bump back to a seven, two medium heavy. Just so that I have more control. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, you know, you're talking about the getting as far back in as you can. I, I've heard, I've heard older guys talk before, you know, I actually had somebody ask an older guy when I was standing around, I was like, well, how do you, you know, what are you going to do about getting them out there when you hang in a fish that big? He said, we'll worry about that when we hang them, but you got to get back there to get them on. So that's right. If, if you ain't getting it back that's there, it. you ain't gonna have a chance to get them on anyways to worry about getting them out. Exactly. And I mean, you know, like, like when I come up and fish wood, I literally, I start on my outside edges and I work everything on the outside edge before I'll dive into that tree. And it'll, it'll amaze you what some trees hold. And yeah. I mean, another, another big thing that everybody, everybody laughs at me up here because they're like, you got to be the worst caster in the world. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you land your frog in the weeds every time. I'm mm. like, yeah, I'm the worst caster in the world. <laughs> so here's, here's the big trick. Like when you, uh, frogs don't fall out of the air. Like yeah. they jump off the shore, you know? We, we spend so much time trying to mimic and we just spend so much money buying these baits that mimic perfectly. And then we go out and flop it three feet from the bank. <laughs> literally, literally put that frog in the grass, pull it off and stop. Because like my home lake, these bass will sit facing out. And once they hear that frog hit the water, they'll turn around. Well, most guys will flop it in the water and then take off, start working it. Well, give it a second. Give that bass a minute to turn around, and you'll be amazed how many more bites you pick up. Yeah, and you, and that's also just regular top water. You know, like yeah. guys throwing a top water. Let the thing sit. That they all, I've always heard key is to let the rings go away. You know, when you throw yeah. a top water, let the rings go away. Give that fish time to kind of hone in on what's where that flop just come from. But it makes sense yep. though, like you said, throwing it up on the weeds, working it in. I mean, if you watch Bassmasters, Lee Livesey won that event. Look how far he was pushing back in those that grass, getting further back into that what a couple of inches of water. Yeah, so, and uh, it'll amaze you how shallow they go. I mean, that twenty-one, that twenty-one literally came out of a foot of water. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty shallow. I know Jason made a comment while back. We were fishing one of his lakes and. What did you say, somebody, if you don't see ticks on their back or something? You made a comment. What yeah, that? that's right. Yeah, I said, they're so shallow right now, they got ticks on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and it was right, man. I mean, you were up there catching them, I mean, just in inches of water when we was up there that day. So, I mean, um, it surprised you, you know, when you always get – I'm fish, used to fishing Smith, so half the time you're sitting in – 25 foot of water making cast to five 10 foot of water you know and if i got anywhere in the back of a creek and i'm in two foot of water i'm like ah, eh, this is too deep i mean too shallow for me i need to get back out to the deep water but you'd be surprised what lives in inches of yeah. water i mean you can get back there and watch them take off sometimes you know so i mean they're there yeah and i mean if you've ever watched brad case or like a josh stewart or even any of the guys from down that georgia alabama area they literally pull five pound fish out of like inches of water. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy to watch them guys flipping those Senkos. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, um, real quick, Tyler, if we'll let you go, I wanted to get into this. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you do. Um, you help, you're one of the, uh, tournament directors, I guess, um, for the Bassmaster Bass, Bass Nation kayak series events. Um, let's talk a little yeah. bit else of what you do too, as well with other tournaments. Um, yeah, actually, I got involved with Dwayne and Steve and Pat Malone and Juan, and we threw this together this year, and we got everything rolling, and I actually, I did the lacrosse event from Pool 7, 8, 9, directed that one, and John Stewart was up there with me, and we had, we had a killer event. Then, it would have been the year before that, we were sitting at a campfire in lacrosse, and I mean, some of the best ideas come from sitting around a campfire. Yeah. And me and Josh Boost were sitting there and we always had up here in the Midwest, we had what they called the Midwest kayak fishing series. It was always, it was always the big, 
the big higher stakes event that, you know, it just, it really made things, it really gave the guys in the central division kind of something to work for, you know, and it just, it, it went away, which it happens, you know, stuff, stuff grows and stuff dies. Mm -hmm. But so I told Josh, I'm like, we should bring this back. So we literally, we sat around and I told him, I said, you know, I said, if we can find, find one good sponsor to help out with this, I mean, I think we should go with it. Cause I, I directed for Iowa kayak anglers for three years. And then, so Josh actually got with Gary Cloak from Everhart Outdoors down in Clinton, Missouri. And Gary said he'd love to help and host. And so what we did was we set up, it's basically an old style old style POC was the tournament that we had this year. So the top 10 from every club gets to come to Truman Lake and fish this year. We ended up paying, paying $10,700 out for first place. Uh, we had 169 anglers. Uh, we gave away a brand new, brand new fully rigged new canoe pursuit and probably ten thousand dollars in prizes nice and so then we we went through right after that and we announced the all-american kayak series which is the kind of a regional series of nebraska iowa wisconsin uh kansas missouri arkansas and oklahoma and we came up with seven events for that. And they're actually, we're going to give three qualifiers away for the All-American at those tournaments. And next year, we gave away this year, this year, all the the businesses in town threw in $100 for big bass of the hour. Well, they want to they wanna raise that bar. They want to get that to be between three and $500 an hour. Oh, wow. And I mean, basically what I want to do is we want to put together just a, a down home fun, you know, just a, a working man's championship. Mm -hmm. You know, these, the guys that are coming to this are the ones that they work all week, go home, take care of the kids and talk their wives into letting the fish tournament on Saturday. You know, we yeah. all know it. <laughs> yeah. That kid. You know what I mean? That's a lot of, a lot of us can't travel, you know. There's there's a lot of them out there that are fortunate that can and I mean more power to them I, I I love watching it but this is this is more geared for that that working man's working lady working kid we had a 14 year old kid this year get 14th place wow 13th or 14th I mean and the, this kid's gonna be a hammer coming out of Indiana yeah yeah that's good so, I love seeing that. And like this year, so I actually recruited Brady Stores this year to come help with this. We're actually going to try to put together like a little, like a vendor show, you know, where people can. We're just basically all we're gonna all we're gonna charge for tables is the just donate a hundred dollars product to the tournament mm -hmm. and come set up all weekend and put your product in front of the anglers. And we're going to do, we're going to do captain's meetings every night and bring everybody back and, you know, just make it a, we're actually, we're having, we're looking at having a, a bass wives club while we're there too. Oh, that that'd be cool. All, all the ladies can get together at the winery and <laughs> have a good time. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's pretty cool, man. Um, but talk a little bit too. Let's go in about bass and, and y'all. Y'all are setting things up. We're getting the last events done. Everybody's yeah. qualified for Texas. You know that's going to go. Uh, that well, they know who's going to make it now. Um, we're getting to set up for 2021 season. Um, I've been talking with Steve Owens and and hoping to get these guys on, and we'll talk a little bit more about the schedule on that. You know, but um, but I mean. Is there going to be, I know you can't go into no detail, but does it look like it's going to be some good changes for next year uh, when it comes to, you know, I don't know, payouts or, I mean, payouts are great now. Well, I'm just saying, it. you know, is there is there going to be any big changes for next year on how the tournaments are done and all that? Um, A lot's going to depend on the COVID situation. You know, I, I hate going back to that. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much what dictates our lives right now, you mm -hmm. know. And so – 
but I mean, as for, as for the planning for the events, basically we're just waiting for the towns to commit that because bass will never release something until it is set in stone. Yeah. That is, that's one thing I've learned. You never speak until it's set in stone. And I mean, I know, I know one for sure that's going to happen, but well, my event for next year, but I can't announce it yet. Yeah. But I mean, there's, there's going to be some wording changes in the rules. I mean, we're, we're just working to make this quicker, cleaner, and easier. You know, we've all, we're, we've all been in directing long enough that, you know, we try to clean everything up to the point where this thing, you guys show up and it runs itself. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been an awesome, awesome process since day one. I mean, bass is super receptive and they're, they're in this for the long haul. Like they're not, they said, I mean, there's, there's not going to be any pulling out and leaving. This is, this is going to be here. Nice. And I think the bigger we build this and the more people that show up, the better off we're going to be in the long run, you know, to, to advance this and go forward with more, you know, the more people we have show up these, the numbers this year were phenomenal. And I mean, I want to, I want to reach out and thank everybody that showed up to a bass event because it was, I mean, all the numbers over 127 was, was lacrosse numbers. I think we had 147 at fork. Was it 220 something at Logan Martin? and 149 here clear lake was a little low but i mean that they had that shit state pretty much shut down yeah i mean that's that's to be to be understood you know yeah yeah and so i mean i i can see the numbers growing next year big i mean it's it's really getting the word out and i think that deep payout helps a lot too oh it's it's a great payout, man. I, I was, you know, I just yeah, definitely what, what Jason got for fourth, man. I mean, yeah. what was you got? What did you end up getting? I mean, if you don't mind saying, no, on, no I don't mind. Uh, 1973 for fourth. Yeah. That's a heck of a payout for fourth place. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, 30th place is 250 bucks. Yeah. You know, that, that's your gas home. You know, that, yeah. that makes a guy feel pretty good. That's his entropy back. You know what I mean? Put that towards yeah. the next one, you know? Um, yep. I mean, it's, it's so many of them, and then it moved up and then was it 500 and some dollars for a couple of positions or something like that? And then, it, yeah. so, yeah, I think it was, I think come eighth place at seventh or eighth place, it come into four, four figure or, you know, yeah, four numbers on your check. Yeah. You know, and there's, it, it spreads the wealth. And I mean, there's there's so much behind the scenes that goes on with bass, you know, and I mean Steve Steve works his butt off, so does Dwayne, uh, John Stewart, uh, the two ladies in the office, like they, I feel sorry for them. The guy that edits all our videos, all our captains meetings, that poor guy, <laughs> I, I sent him a train wreck for lacrosse. <laughs> I literally right in the middle of it, I'm like. Hey, I said, whoever's editing this, I said, I apologize. <laughs> and it was, it was like two days later, I get a text with just that clip out of it. He says, apology, not accepted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's, I, I've been really impressed how Bass kind of jumped in this thing and, and, and took off with it. Um, it's been, it's been phenomenal. Just. I just seen how smooth it was and how, how smooth it ran and like the communication with text messaging, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, the emails, I mean, there's so much communication with it. I mean, they even yeah. email you the rules when you do this, you don't have to go searching for stuff. It's, it's so simple. And, uh, um, yeah. I, I really like that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, it's the bass theory, you know, we're, we're just out here trying to get, you know, everybody that chases these little green fish, we're just trying to get them together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a little higher scale, but I mean, it's, it's worth every penny to, to show up at one of the events and just see those blue trophies. I mean, it, it, it's a good, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, like I said, this was this was my first Bass Nation event. 
I really wanted to do lacrosse, but it didn't work out this year. And when Chickamauga, I saw Chickamauga on the schedule and we were able to make it work. And like I said, talking about payout, you know, for 250 entry fee, yeah. you know, you're going up against, uh, which is not much, to be honest with you, for what you win and what you get, what you can qualify for with the championship and the opportunities that are there. Yeah. I lost my train of thought. No, you're right, though. I mean, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it, it was just an awesome event, period. I mean, from, like Josh was saying, the communication, the way it was put on, even in the situation we're in, like you said, with the COVID and the social distancing, I can only imagine how great it would be when all this stuff settles down and we can actually have a, an event where everybody can be around each other and, yeah. you know, as a group and able to do different things. So yeah. it's, and I'm looking forward to the uh, schedule release and basically the future and see where it goes from here yeah i'm i'll be real curious to see how the classic i mean i know i know the first year classic was was a little tough you know and it didn't didn't strike people well but you know what we're we're learning they're learning i mean we're all in this together we had to start somewhere and i mean i i think this year they're gonna knock it out of the park i mean we finally finally got the lake locked down and it sounds sounds like it's gonna it's gonna be a fight on that lake. So yeah, you know any lake in Texas has yeah. got to be good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's Texas takes care of their fishermen. They take care of their bass. They do well. They do really well. Yeah, it's For funny the homework the homework actually started today. I was already after I got unpacked. One of the first things I did was open up the laptop and looked up the lake <laughs> and started looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Preliminaries preliminary guesses are calling Matt Scotch for the win. Oh wow! Yeah, it's crazy how that goes, though. You know what I mean? You got yep. a home home water advantage here. Look what happened down yep. in Louisiana. Uh, was it two years ago? They were yeah, with Dwayne. Yeah, they were expecting Dwayne to, to knock it out the park, and he kind of struggled a little bit. So, well, I, I went down in seventeen and humbled them Texas guys. <laughs> at the old yeah, yeah. Hey man, and like I say, I hope it works out. I hope it works out for both of you guys. Really, I mean, uh, we got another guy on here, Ron. He he sponsors our uh, giveaways most nights that we have. Uh, tackle Ron Weimer with uh, RBT Custom Crank uh, Custom Baits. Uh, he did have a question for the uh, class coming. He said, "How many anglers will be at Texas? I mean, how many qualifying spots were there?" Um, I think the last list there was just a shade over a hundred, but that didn't. Include include the state clubs that put on state qualifiers and so i'm guessing we'll be in that two to 250 range mm -hmm. which which should i mean that's still a solid field that's it's small enough that you know it's it you you don't get that you don't get that huge tournament field but you i mean you're literally you're going for a spot on the classic stage yeah. in two days you know right well right. i would I don't care if there's a thousand people there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the way right. I see it, I like I like it the smaller the numbers, and this is the way I look right. at it. I, right. I think like what I think what Josh, you know, I don't I don't mean to cut you off. No, you're I think fine. The smaller the field, the harder the qualifications are to get there. The more elite, yeah, that it makes that tournament. Absolutely. And I think that's what needs to be done in a, in a few other places. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Hobie, Hobie, AJ and Hobie, Kevin and Hobie, they got they got their stuff together. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, definitely. That TOC is a top level event, and I mean AJ, AJ is one of the truest guys you'll ever meet in your life, you know. And I I have nothing nothing but great things to say about AJ and them guys. I mean they they put on a heck of a show everywhere they go. Yep. Yeah. I, I I've really I've actually thought about you know if I do some more tournaments next year is maybe trying to enter into a Hobie event, you know, and, and fish. Yeah. I like them. You know, you don't hear nothing bad about it. You know what I mean? You don't, um, here you guys come up to lacrosse. They're having an event up there. Come up. I know a guy that knows the river pretty good. <laughs> Dude, I want to go up there so bad. That's like a bucket list. Yeah, I just hope definitely. that bucket list is better than the Chickamauga bucket list. When I had, you know, but, but from what <laughs> I see, it is. <laughs> Yeah, I've never I've never had fishing that tough on the river. I mean, it gets tough, but you're still going to catch 20 fish a day. 
but yeah, I mean, it's, and it's, it's everybody's wonderland. I mean, I actually, I won, I won the first KBF tournament up there when they the first put one up there, there was like 13 or 18 guys in it. <laughs> and I met Jeremiah Burris from Expo Lacrosse. And if you guys ever get a chance to get him on, he, he's an incredible guy. Yeah. And our, the goal we've like went out and fished with Chad on Sunday and did a little filming and this and that. And I got to know Jeremiah and I'm like, you know, I said, we really need to get some big events up here. I said, if we get people here, I think we can show them that it's not like, it's not like St. Louis, Mississippi, you know, where it's all catfish and big wide open channels. This is, I mean, it's some of the most, most amazing views and backwater cuts, just crystal clear water on the Mississippi you'll ever see. Mm. And the bass are voracious. Yeah, I want to get up there so bad. Like I, that's I just that's why I told James. I said, you know, I, I hope the schedule's up there next year uh, for bass or so. I just want to get up there so bad and fish, uh, fish that water. And it always looks like it's a frog bite or, or you know whatever bite it is. It's always good. You know, like it's so yeah. Really excited about getting up there uh, at one point in time. Hopefully. Um, got one more question for you, Tyler, before we let you go. I know it's getting late. You got a lot of unpacking to do and you are tired from a long, long trip. Um, talking about the bass going into the future. Um, you know, there, there's been a lot of talk with KB or just kayak tournaments in general, uh, a pro series. I mean, does, does bass look like having something where you're going to have your opens, but you're also going to have, I say a, a, like a tour, you know? Um, I, I I think if we if we build this large enough, we could get to that point. But yeah. I mean, we have. I I honestly think there's going to be a lot bigger number involved than than you know 150. You know, to really to really turn the big sponsors' head to get an elite series on the kayak side, we have to show them that hey, we're here. Yeah. And that's, it's so critical at every event to, to get every person, you know, to get out there, you know, I mean, and it, I had guys this year at lacrosse that this bass was their first event, their first live kayak event ever. Wow. And they be, they'll be back to back to it every year. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it really, truly the opens care, they cater from the beginner all the way up. And I think, I really think if we pack, if we pack these and we show these sponsors that we're the real deal, you know, and I mean, we're talking, we're talking 200 to 250 an event, yeah, which is phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's almost astronomical at this point, but we're growing so big so fast. Yeah. I mean, as a sport as a whole, you're seeing you're seeing these clubs pop up out of nowhere. Next thing you know, they got 60 guys in it, you know, yep. and there's two, three, two, three clubs per state. And I mean, from, from when I started five years ago, I mean, we, we had nothing. We, we had Iowa kayak anglers and this, this Midwest kayak fishing series online and then KBF online stuff. That's all we had. And now, I mean, it's, it's almost a tournament every weekend. And I mean, we're growing and we're getting that respect. And so I think if we, I think if we pack these events, we can, we can definitely go in with some leverage. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would be nice to get some of those non academic sponsors, you know, the ones that are going to come in and really put the money and, and see it, see it growing yeah. for what it is. And yeah, I mean, old town, old town has been this year, you know, and everything they do, they've been there to support every event that we've been to you know berkeley does their big thing uh hook's been a huge money sponsor this year abu garcia i mean attorney x even Dwayne at attorney x i mean that guy doesn't get enough credit for right. all the stuff he does you know you can call that man at 3 a.m <laughs> and he'll answer you you know and i mean me and Dwayne have grown very close over the last year or two and I mean, we got, like I said, he, he deserves way more credit than what he ever gets. 
Yeah. Dwayne's definitely a good guy. And to be able to take the time and I mean, that's when you run uh, uh tourney X, for instance, when you run something as big as he's running, it takes a lot of your time. You know, you don't get to go out and do the things you want to do all the time, especially with him r- working a full time job as well. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's tough, man. It, it's really tough it's to do trying, that. Trying to hunt and fish and keep mama happy at home, you know. I mean, <laughs> that guy, he, he pulls some hours. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's a workaholic, you know what I mean? He loves, yeah. but he works hard and he gets to do what he loves to do, so. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, well, Tyler, I, I appreciate you coming on with us tonight, man. I appreciate, uh, like say, just – all that y'all have done for the sport, uh, what y'all are growing this bass bass series into, but also what you're turning it your other your local events into, uh, and taking the time because it takes guys like you to help grow this thing, you know. And and there's so many more guys out there just like that, you know. It takes dedication. Uh, I run a small club years ago, a bass club and it, a bass boat club, and it's a lot of work just at the small level with 15 guys in it, much less what you guys are doing. So. Um, the sport would not be anything that it is now without guys like you, uh, you know, Chad Hoover, uh, for growing the, uh, recon- recognition to kayak fishing as big as he's done, uh, AJ, you know, Dwayne, it's so many guys out there. So uh, we really do appreciate you guys taking the time that you do to, to help grow this sport. Um, do you got anybody you'd like to thank sponsor wise and all that before I let you go? Yeah, uh, Mossy Oak. Uh, they, they treat me amazing there. Eric Johnston's my, my lead guy. And I mean, he's, he's does awesome with me. Uh, like I said before, Hawkeye rods, if you want, if you need a rain shadow, get hold of me, we'll get something built for you. Uh, boondocks is another one that's been there for me all year. Uh, Lurch's lures is on, this guy lives on chick. So if you want the juice for chick, he's the guy to call. <laughs> Uh, Bassett Bates out of Rockford, Illinois. This guy builds all my jigs, and there's, I actually have my own series of jigs through him that we we are indeed for, I don't know, two and a half years before we finally released them. And, I mean, I got a, I got a shout out to Robohawk that he's an Iowa-based tether company. I mean, he does he does some amazing work, and, like, I know for up here, we're we're headed into ice fishing season, so. You can use these things for anything. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Well, like I say, man, I appreciate it. We got several guys on here congratulating you. Um, you know, it. Yeah, Chris, Chris, Ron, um, several other guys on here that, 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 you know, congratulating you on your win. And like I say, man, good good win on a tough lake. And uh, to do it the way you love to fish is phenomenal. And we don't get many chances at that to be able to win an event the way we love to fish. So, um I yeah really yeah. appreciate congrats it congrats again tyler i hey, appreciate it bud thanks to you too yeah yeah appreciate uh, it all right buddy you have a good night uh get you some rest and uh you know soak it all in and hopefully a big check yeah. will be there soon <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks guys i appreciate everything all right man all thank right. you see you all right Bye. all right let me switch this over all right jason i'm not gonna keep you much longer bud I know we're getting late. You were tired. You uh, definitely. <laughs> we did that drive, and granted, we didn't have a longest drive as some of these other guys did, um, but it felt like it. I swear, it felt like we drove to Louisiana. I don't know what it yeah, was. It was it was about the same feeling for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we were talking Pretty about much. it at the boat ramp what a while back that uh, we had the meeting that we had for a board check in. We was talking to a couple of guys and was talking like you said. It just felt like you were hung over from the drive and, and that's how i felt man i just felt today i just felt hung over from the drive it was <laughs> it was tough but um but yeah. let's talk a little bit you're talking about your you caught your fish off of an under underspin um is that something you right. use on a on a common basis i know we talked about this yesterday a little bit um because i'm like man i need to start throwing this thing because i've seen you throwing it a lot uh you threw it at smith didn't yeah. you catch some of your fish at this, the kbf event off that am i wrong on that but i know you threw it some i threw it at smith but i didn't get, catch any fish on it okay i remember you talking about throwing i seen it tied right. on but yeah um, i didn't um there were some fish schooling i did find bait fish you know in some of the channels and stuff at smith but i just couldn't get them on the underspin all my fish at smith either came on the buzz bait or skipping the docks yeah 
Now, this uh, the underspin, um, is that something that you throw, like say, is that, do you just always have one tied on for certain situations, or is it just something like if it's spring or fall? or, or, or? Usually summer and, and fall, and, and even the wintertime. You know, in the wintertime, you know, I might, instead of putting a swimming trailer on it like the Kitek, I might put a straight tail fluke on it to give it that more subtle action where it's not, you know, thumping. Yeah. Whereas in the summer and the fall and, you know, until the water temp gets cold, then I'll have that swimming, you know, the paddle tail trailer on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, I just, I'm like, man, you know, I, I've been beat at Smith mountain before with guys during the winter time throwing or early, early spring, like when it's jerk bait season, you know what I mean? When the water's still right. And, 50 or under you know and i threw him when the when the fad first kind of got going with it years ago and just could not do anything kind of hung it up and never tried to throw it again i got a few in the box but i just don't throw it but what's your setup with that because that's kind of like working similar to like spinner bait you throw it out there you let it sit you reel it in kind of deal but what's yeah, your setup with line and all that um basically a seven foot medium action rod um, you want that softer tip so the fish can load up on it. You know, you don't want too stiff a rod because you'll pull it away. You want the fish to grab it and get it before you load up, you know, and set the hook. So about a seven foot medium action, um, kind of like a chatterbait rod, you know, about that action. Yeah. Um, same with, same with a top water, um, anywhere from 14 to 17 pound K9 fluoro is what I use. Yeah, and, I, and, and then a uh, six three to one, six four to one reel. I know you're really big, which you're you're on with K nine, and you've done really well with K nine. You know what I mean? I mean, right? They've been one of my one of my biggest supporters. Yeah, and I know like you you show up at the the hotel or the house or whatever, you got a box full of <laughs> of K nine. You know, and I've been using the braid, great braid. Um, never, I, me personally, I've never had no issues with K9 and I'm not sponsored by K9 or nothing like that, but I've used your braid because of you and I do like their braid. It's a great braid. Uh, I use it on my drop it shot is. stuff. Um, and then you also have their, what is that? It's, what is that bright green? What do they call that? You were showing me the aquarium up there at it's, Fishersville. All right. It's the have is, is yeah. what they call it. And it's clear as crap in the water, like oh, yeah. underwater. You know what I mean? I was really impressed with it, but it's a great line. Like if you got dirty water, you're throwing like a uh, Cinco, something like that. You need to watch your line. You need to be able to see your line. Um, but yeah, also black light. water, night, right? Even night fishing, if you're using lights, yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's like neon with the with the light shine on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna get me some of that and try it this this uh, summer when I get on to kind of like that um, night bite, you know, and and using a black light and all that. So, um, I'm but to get... I, I mean, I still use it like where I fish. I mean, if I'm fishing deeper, you know, on jigs or big shaky heads, if I'm fishing deep, I'll still use that high vis, high vis line. Yeah. And it doesn't affect the bites at all. I mean, they, they, they eat it cause they can't see it that deep underwater. No, you're right. You're I mean, exactly you can't right. see it in the, you can't really see it in the fish tank in a foot of water. No. I mean, it, I was really impressed when you showed me in that fish tank. I was like, holy crap, because it is a bright, bright green. But then you put it in the daggone water, and you're like, holy moly. Um, I'm just kind of reading through some of the things. Ron wanted to know, is one objective going to Texas? I'd, if we would have made the classic, possibly, well, definitely then. But it's still up in the air if we're going to go down there for media stuff. A lot of that is is because of COVID. Um I don't know how this is going to go down. I don't know if there's going to be much of an expo. You know, we're at the mercy of what's going to happen next year. We just don't know, you know, so much going right. The case is going back and up. With the, right. With the numbers rising and everything, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple months. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't see it being – I don't know. I don't know. We're still we're still thinking about it. But, but I'm Jason, going. Yeah, Jason's going. <laughs> Jason's going. I was hoping it was going to be the trio – well, what'd you call it with four? It'd be Ron too. But I, I was the hoping, horseman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, we didn't qualify, but that's all right. Um, as always, next year. So, um, looking forward to that. Jason, what's 
you know, let's kind of we we got away from the the bait that helped you win. Let's talk about the moment when you caught that last fish. I mean, I mean, did you have it in your mind? I know we talked about it on the phone. You're like, yeah, I don't know if I'll, I'll have enough to win. But did you still, was it still that thought in your mind? Like, dude, I could possibly, this could have been a winning fish right here. I knew, like I said, when, when they took the leaderboard down and the last I checked, I had three fish. And I was in the, like I said, mid to upper 30s. So I knew two fish would go a long way. And then my very next fish that I caught was, I think, 16 and three quarter. And then, as like I said, as I'm measuring the fish, trying to get my picture and submit it, they're busting all around the cack. I mean, within a few feet of it. And I'm, I'm scrambling. I'm going crazy trying to get this done and everything to get the lures back out there to keep throwing and keep throwing because it's happening so quick. Yeah. And I finally just said you know this board this fish is going to flop off the board or something so i just tried to get that out of my mind and secure my picture and got back to where i needed to be and within like two or three casts i caught that 18 and that right there i knew that unless somebody had really the bite fired up for a bunch of guys quickly that i was in a decent spot yeah, you know, not not necessary to make the top five, but at least cash a decent check, which you know was great. Yeah, and because our main goal for going was qualifying for Texas. Yeah, that in the championship that that was the main goal. But at that point, you know, I did catch a couple others that one that didn't measure. I caught another fifteen that didn't help me call up. And at the very end, about the last ten minutes, I ended up throwing a five point eight Kitek with a belly weight just trying to get that bigger bite. Cause I did see some bigger ones in the school, but that just, it didn't pan out. I didn't get any to look at that, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, I got back to the ramp, loaded up and then I got in my truck and I saw I missed a call. And when I called back, it was Steve telling me to come to Dayton. And <laughs> he left me a message. So when I called back, he told me that they had lost all my fish, dumped the system, dumped them all. And I had to get them all submitted within the next few seconds or, you know, (laughs) and he was just, he was messing with me hard and man, my nerves are tore up. And when he told me, and I remember, you know, the pre uh, meeting thing or whatever, they said they were going to bring the top five for the awards. Yeah. So when he, when I got that call, I mean, my, my nerves were, I, you know, I told you how, how, what I was doing, man. I mean, my eyes were watering up. You know, I was I was just so excited because I didn't have no idea where I was at. I just knew I was there. Yeah. And so it was just, it was just a blessing. Yeah, it really was. I but mean, it was hard <clears throat> hard work. You know, it it paid off, and it was it was a blessing. Yeah, and and you worked hard, man. I mean, all year long just fishing. Now, when I say working hard, you know, we've said so many times on the show is time on the water. It don't matter where, you know what I mean? As long as you're putting that time on the water. And right. <clears throat> Jason, for you, this is what I really like. And, you know, you got some guys that do really well in one body of water. They win tournaments there all the time. They don't go nowhere else or anything. But that body of water that you fish, I don't want to say it because I, it's already getting crowded as it is. So I don't I don't want to say it. Most people that, know, that watch this show probably know, but it provides you so much different kind of fishing. You got deep water right. fishing, you got grass, you got timber, you got you got everything that a lake should have for a great bass habitat, you know? And but you also like sometimes like you got guys that can catch fish and burn your tail up, kick your teeth in on Smith Mountain. But they go to another lake and they can't hardly catch them. Right. And because they get so, you know, sometimes lakes a finesse lake, but it could be a power fishing lake as well. But they, they get so tuned in on that lake that they don't fish other things. Well, for you, you're always changing at your lake <clears throat> to catch them. You know, you might have two or three weeks at this and this and this and this. The thing about you, though, I mean, you come up to Smith for the KBF and did well. I mean, you made money. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, you, I mean, Smith Smith is always one of my favorite places to go. Yeah. Because we we vacation up there for several years. I don't know, maybe the last 10 years. And so, I, I mean, I got some experience there and, you know, in the summer. But 
early spring and late fall, I really didn't have a whole lot of experience, but still knew, you know, had a good idea of what to do and everything else, and it just happened to work out. But, yeah, but I mean, the area yeah, I'm, you fished, I'm, I'm though, fortunate. Yeah. The area you fished, it wasn't. I mean, I'm not saying you never fished there, but it wasn't a spot. You know, most of the time when y'all vacation, y'all are at the lower end of the lake. Right. We're up towards the dam area. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, but, you know, you go there. I mean, you've had a good finish at Kentucky Lake several years ago at the KBF. Um, you know, Louisiana was kind of a bust, but that it was a bust right. for everybody that, that, that fished that, that right. one body of water that we fished down there. Yeah, uh, the next day we did better. That's my one big exception <laughs> with, my, with my traveling experience is yeah. <laughs> Louisiana. Yeah. So hopefully one day we'll be able to get back down there and find some redemption. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you're a well-rounded angler when it comes to that. I mean, and I think that, you know, just kind of looking at, and, and I don't, I haven't known you long. What have we known each other? Two, three years, something like that. Three years. About three. Yeah. yeah. And just seeing you. I think you, we first met at, uh, at Bob's tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Up there. At, uh, what was that lake? Uh, I can't think of the name of that lake now. Up in Lexington. Roberts. Yes. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Lake Robertson. <clears throat> and, um, actually we just kind of started talking, you know, on the phone and, and, and stuff like that afterwards. And, but following you on Facebook and, and seeing how you're doing with it, Briary, I mean, uh, not Briary, but, uh, a couple of the lakes over here. I'm, about, I'm spilling the beans, man. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, but you always catching pick fish, man. And it, I remember going fishing with you in the spring and I catch a little four pounder and I'm all pumped. I say little four pounder. I'm, I'm happy with it. Jason's like, man, I caught like three or four of them dudes earlier today. Like, you're excited about that, you know? But you're <laughs> so you used to catching big fish there. It's just a big fish factory. Um, but anyways, watching you do that, and I, I have a feeling like you're going to be one of them guys that you're able to dial in, you're able to focus on what you're doing throughout the day and not giving up, and you grind. You know what I mean? And that's what it takes to be a great tournament angler. And I think next year... You know, I'm not saying you'll be able to fish them all, but if you fished a good portion of it, you're. I see you going to the classic again. You know, if you get the body, the water right, and it that fits perfect yeah, to your I fishing. Hope, I hope so. I hope the uh, schedule works out where I can do, um, at least a few of them. Yeah. Um, you know, ones that are close. If they're far away, and you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a chore, you know, getting the time off of work and everything else. Yeah. But uh, I want to try to do as much as possible. I love the way the bass set up their series and everything, and uh, it's it's good. I, I hope it uh, hope it works out next year. Me too. Now I got one question for you before we let you go. Talking about bass, um, this is a couple things I've talked about. And not that it would have helped me anything this weekend because I would have just lost it on day one. But would you like to see Bass go to like a two-day format? Or would you still like the one-day shootout kind of deal? I mean, what is, what is your thoughts on that? I don't really have any mixed feelings about it. I think uh, either way, I'd be, I'd yeah, be perfectly it's still fine with. It's still, a great, right. it's still a great series. Right. I just feel like... <clears throat> and just that, that extra day with, can... Uh, depending on weather and everything else, it can throw a big kink into some people's plans and other people it can, you know, it can help. And yeah. it just, you know, it just throws a, throws a little extra, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to word. It's, I, I it's, get it. Right. But yeah. And I, and yeah. I, I just, I feel like going and like, say, I'm not saying nothing bad about bass. I love what bass does. Um, I, I've been a supporter of bass for many years. Um, but I just, I don't know. It's always like when you get those big events, I love like two day shootouts. You know what I mean? Right. Like KBF right. did. Two days yeah. nice because you got, you get time to adjust, but that one day, I mean, you, you better have a good game plan or at least have something and, and then just stick with it and grind it throughout the day to make the best of what, whatever you got. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no, you know, there's no second day to it. So you got to make the best of it. Yep. That's exactly right. And, and, and that, that, that itself is, you know, it's pretty good. And, and the and the and the part I do like about one day shootouts is if you do find a spot, you can grind it all day, and burn that hole up. You know what I mean? Right. When it comes to two day stuff, you're like, crap, I need to save it. And then sometimes you're having to guard a spot, and not go look for other water because you don't know nobody else fishing it. So, 
you know, it, it's mixed yeah, emotions yeah. about that. But I do like two day shootouts. I don't know why. I've always liked them. Yeah, at one point, like I said, before I got my fourth and fifth fish, um, I fired up the trolling motor and I took off out of the creek because I was I wanted to go find some new new water, try to find something. And when I got out there, I mean, there were boats in every cut. There were cacks in every cut. And I just turned around. I mean, I made made, made about a 10-minute trip and came right back to that point, and I sit there the rest of the day. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something amazing about that point real quick before I let you go is – when me and James, remember, we, we were driving through and was like, look, man, this is a spot we've seen a lot of fish blowing up. We never fished it until the day you come in and we all went and fished it, you know? Um, and we was talking about there was some fish blowing up in some grass, but that wasn't even the spot. Where you were fishing at was not even the spot that we were looking at. No, no. I was I was a couple hundred yards away from that. Yeah, you were on the other side of the lake. But I and remember... Actually, I don't know. I don't think I could have fished it because the whole time I was there, the camp you know the, that's where the campsites and stuff were yeah and they were bank fishermen lined up yeah. all up and down through there so it, it would have been tough and the cool thing about it though on practice it was me you i come up on you i was actually going to make a smart aleck comment when i come by i seen you throwing a rattle trap and i was like why are you throwing that stupid thing you know like i was just gonna make a smart aleck comment and then the fish started blowing up and you're like come in here man so i start casting had a couple hits and then here comes James, and he hangs on a couple of them, you know? You hang into a couple. There was so much fish in there. I mean, we literally right. could have sit there and just fished until dark, and we did just about. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I never seen, even when we was up there watching, going and looking at the lake, you know, before we even put in, checking out ramps, I never seen nobody fishing that. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's going right by it. How many how many yeah. kayak fishermen did you have in your cut when you there put were in? eight and there were two that stayed you know within sight of me pretty much the whole day and they both when they came back if I wasn't there if I was on the other point they went back and went on somewhere else so I was fortunate with that and then like I said that morning there was a uh, boat tournament putting in but they didn't launch till late because of the fog yeah and there was probably 25 boats in that. And none of them, and they let them fish just with trolling motors right around that, that area mm -hmm. until the fog lifted. And none of them came over, you know, where I was at at all either. Even though I was within sight of them and, you know, was catching one or two little fish, they still, you know, stayed off. And, you know, I was really grateful for that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I got I got pretty lucky. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to get spots like that. Yeah, the ramp I put in, dude, it was so many kayaks. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, because mo most of the time you find schooling fish in those creeks and stuff, you know, they're constantly, they're moving up and down the banks and they're moving out, moving in. And for some reason, this one particular point with this spot, I mean, it was just all day long. I mean, just every couple minutes they would come up. It was just, it was, it was insane. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely. I had the GoPro running. We're going to be doing all our, our practice videos that are going to be coming out soon for our YouTube channel. Um, and I'm going to wrap all of our practice days into one video, you know, so it's going to be a long video. So everybody watches it. Just, I ain't doing a lot of talking, um, through it. Some, some parts I am, but, but there's a spot that towards the end, the last actual day on the water, I bet they will be able to see how much fish are blowing up. It was crazy all the fish blown up. i mean we looked at through some of the footage the spot i had and you could just see them steadily blowing up and it was even better on your spot like i just couldn't yeah, believe how I many wish, fish were in there you know i pulled an all-time bonehead move and left my uh gopro mount and my power cord at the house i brought my gopro but didn't bring any of the other stuff that i needed yeah so if i could have had that that footage had that running with me it would have been it would have been some really good footage yeah i i it does suck about that, but I get it. I've done it too. I've forgotten left, you know, GoPro stuff at the house or whatever. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Great job, man. Like say, I ain't gonna keep you much longer. It's shoot. We're getting close to 10 o'clock. I didn't want to go to 10 o'clock night, but, um, but just a great showing, man. I I'm glad to have you on the team for one objective. Um, yeah, thank and, you. And to, to be able to do what you did, it it's just phenomenal. Um, we, I was just glad to, me and James could be there and be a part of it for you. You know what I mean? With you. Yeah, I'm I'm glad y'all could have been there too. And it is always great hanging out with you and 
you know, two great guys, you and you and James, and I appreciate everything. I, I appreciate it, man. Like I say, you, you're a heck of a guy. So, uh, and I think that you're going to have a bright future, especially in this kayaking thing. You know, I don't know what the future holds. If later on you decide to get a bass boat or stay in a kayak, and I don't know, but you're a well-rounded angler and I see things going really good for you. If you just, you know, you keep hammering down like you've been doing and grinding. And, uh, and I hope that, uh, I hope that Texas goes really well for, for you and Ron down there. I want to see both of you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. it. I'm, I'm really, really hoping it does. Well, Jason, man, I appreciate it. You yeah. got, you want to thank any of your sponsors? Um, uh, yeah. Go? Um, I didn't get a chance to do it at the awards cause it just, I was too excited and just skipped my mind, but, uh, hey, Ricky Bobby, uh, bonus, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know. Uh, bonafide cats, yak attack, canine fishing, um, RBT custom baits, one objective, of course, and, uh, yank them tackle. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you got a great group of people backing you, man. And, uh, look, looking forward to seeing how next year goes. And, um, I'm hoping that we have some pretty exciting news coming up here in the next couple of weeks, um, with bass and, and all that. So stay tuned for that guys. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. If you don't mind after the show's done, if you, if you're just kind of been in with us, please share it. Um, we want to get these guys as much attention as they can. Also, just trying to get bass as much attention as we can uh, with them growing this series and um, this being their first year. So we just we just want to get as much attention as we can for that, especially with the kayak scene growing as fast as it is. Um, but, Jason, I'm going to let you get going. I'm going to finish this thing up and get on off here and All get right, to bed myself. You, but Appreciate I'll holler at you later, man. Congratulations again. All right. Yep. Thanks, bud. Appreciate Thank you. it. Bye. All right. Let me uh, get this back to – here we go. Uh, anyways, guys, I want to thank y'all for tuning in tonight. I know it was a long show. I actually didn't anticipate the show to go that, uh, go that long, but I'm glad it did. Cause we had uh, some great, great conversations with two great guys, uh, great fishermen. So, um, Chris, I hope you're feeling, be- get to feeling better here soon. Uh, I plan on hopefully Thanksgiving's coming up. I'm going to see how Sunday goes doing a show. Sorry. It's been so long with doing a show. Uh, had a lot of other side jobs here around the house, uh, to get done. Um, but once I'm looking at, uh, not December, January kicking off really good, uh, with, uh, maybe a better show. I don't know. You know, we're going to try to get some odd and things, fix up studio a little bit more, um, and hope to have some new guests on that we have never had on. So guys, if there's any guests out there that you would love for us to have on the show, whether it's kayak anglers, where it's, uh, bass boat guys, pros, um, let us know, you know, it, it ain't, he's always got to be some elite pro or some guy that just won a tournament. We love getting guys on and just talking fishing. So, um, just shoot us a message, uh, on one objectives, Facebook, Facebook page or Instagram. Sorry if sometimes it takes us a while to get to them. They don't pop up immediately on our phones for some reason. I don't get it, but, um, also we got some new video contents can be coming out on YouTube. I want to thank everybody that has subscribed to our channel. Um, we are, well into 4,000 some now. I think it's 4,400 some, if I'm not wrong. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what it was. Uh, I really appreciate everybody that subscribed to our YouTube channel. I never thought it would get that big for us. I know there's guys that there were thousands and millions, and but for us, we're happy with where we're at right now. Um, but like I said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Please share this video. We're going to have this podcast up here soon, so uh, if you didn't catch it all tonight, the podcast should be up tomorrow about midday-ish. Um, so, but anyways, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for joining in with us. Thank you for all the support. See you guys have a safe weekend and stay healthy. See ya.